All right, and got to recognize one of the rock stars around here and Melissa, and we got to hear Charity say duty. It's a good day. She said duty. All right. All right. You really never grow up. You just. All right. Um, all right, well, we are going to finish out our uh, CEU time together today, and I know all of you are so very happy about that. Um, but we are, uh, um, we've been talking all quarter long about God's direction for our life, and the good news is, is that God wants to give us direction. For every step we take in life, God wants to provide, provide direction for that if we will but trust Him uh, with our lives and where we are going with our lives. He will lead us. He will lead us. And so I hope that you have been able to take something away from, from these lessons that in some area of your life has helped you. Uh, over the last many weeks, we've been talking about the process of finding God's direction and using Paul um, as, as an example with this, as someone who certainly uh, went through a journey and a process of stepping into God's direction and I think taught us a lot about what that looks like. Today, we just sort of a conclusion uh, of, of this see you and uh, so because of time we're gonna hit this hit this sort of quick uh, but I want to challenge you I want to challenge you as we as we finish this out um, about uh, not just not just desiring to to find God's direction, but uh, to to really understand that God has a dream for your life. Like we quote things to our students, like Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, all the time, and we would speak that over them. We would pray that over them. If we're not careful, that can become sort of become cliche, right? And we we speak that over our students, and we speak that over others, but we fail to believe that for our own lives. God not only wants to give you direction in life, but can I just say to you, God has a dream for your life. God has a dream for your life. Um, and, and that's what we want to talk about today. Uh, point number one, um, I want to challenge you to dream big, to dream big. Um, uh, sort of like the man who, who was asked by God for his, he'd been faithful and, uh, God, God almost like, uh, almost like Aladdin, right? Um, said, Hey, I, you've been faithful. I want to bless you. Right. So just tell me whatever you want me to do for you. And I'm going to I'm going to do it. Well, the guy had always wanted to go to Hawaii. He lived in California, always wanted to go to Hawaii, but he was afraid of airplanes. Right. And so he said, he said, God, what I would love for you to do is to build a bridge from California to Hawaii. Uh, because I, I want to visit there, but I'm I'm just really afraid to get in a plane and fly. And uh, God said, well, you've been faithful, but that's a, that's a pretty big, uh, pretty big ask. And uh, that's, that's really impractical. So why don't you ask something else? And the guy said, well, you know, I, I would really, really like to understand women. Uh, I, I would like to know what women are thinking when they say certain things. I, I would just like to be able to get into a woman's mind and just understand their, their psyche. And God said, would you like that bridge two lanes or four? <laughs> I knew it was a chance in a room that would be dominated by women, but I had to go there. It's our last, it's our last see you were out of here in two days. I said, what do I have to lose? Right? I just threw it out there. All right. Yeah. Um, but, but dream big. All right. Dream big. God is able, Ephesians 2 says, to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or dream according to his power that works in 
us. John Maxwell said, a dream is an inspiring picture of the future that energizes your mind, your will, your emotions, empowering you to do everything you can to achieve it. Um, I want to ask you a question. Do you have a dream for your life? Do you have a dream for your life? Not, not did you have a dream for your life? Because I think many of us, uh, probably all of us, at some point in our life, uh, had a dream, right? We, we dreamed something and we believed God was going to do something with our life and we had great aspirations. Uh, but it's easy as you get older to sort of lose, lose sight of that dream. Like life gets in the way, circumstances get in the way, relationships get in the way, and we lose sight of the dream that God wants put in our hearts. So I didn't ask you, did you have a dream? But do you have a dream for your life? Do you have a God infused dream in your, in your life? Um, John Maxwell, I read a book, uh, several years ago by John Maxwell called put your dreams to the test. And, and there were 10 questions that he asked in that about, uh, about, um, finding a dream for your life or, or discovering the God's dream for your life. And I want to briefly go through these. I'm not going to spend much time on them, but I, I, I think they're just such great questions. I put them in your notes because I, I think they really, um, I think these are things that really merit you perhaps spending some time in your in your devotions or your quiet time contemplating these questions about the dreams that are in your in your heart in your life. Number one, the ownership question. Is my dream really my dream? Is my dream really my dream? Why is this important? Because it is so easy to go through our life coveting the dreams, covering, uh, coveting the gifts and the passions that God has given to other people. It's so easy to do, right? Um, and, and, and so it's important. It's important that like when we look at the dream that is in our heart, that it's not someone else's dream. Uh, but it's the dream that God has given us. Um, I say this sometimes in, in chapel because I see, I see people uh, like Amu. Um, you know, I, I know I said at graduation, you can't do everything. The exception might be Amu, right? Who sometimes it appears he actually can do everything. And it's sort of crazy. Um, but but I see I see people like Amu sometimes standing up here and, and leading worship. Um, and and I, I, I got to tell you, sometimes I'm like, you know, I would love to do that. Like, yes. The only problem is I listen to myself sing and I say, no. <laughs> But I want that. I really want that. I, I would love to do that. But you know what? I'm not gifted to do that. And, and as much as as much as I love seeing other people do it and as much as it inspires me and at times I have to fight myself from coveting the fact that they do it so well. That isn't what God has gifted me for. So if I go through life wanting to do that, wanting to live their dream, I'm going to miss out on the dream that God has for my life. Second, the clarity question. Do I clearly see my dream? Remember what we talked about with Paul. It's not about certainty, right? Because, uh, uh, because there will be a lot about God's dream for your life that is uncertain. Paul said, I, I know what God has for me right now. I know the dream for me right now is to go to Jerusalem, but I don't know what's going to happen when I get there. But he was clear on what he was supposed to be doing. Do you clearly see your, your dream? Uh, third, the reality question. And am, am I depending on factors in my control to achieve my dream? Um, we, we all need to reach right far beyond what we are capable of. But in the same token, uh, in, in the same way, um, um, 
there are some factors in our life that are sort of out of our control. I talked about this at graduation as well, right? Josiah's never going to be a sumo wrestler. Paul's never going to be a horse jockey. I'm never going to be a world-class musician or singer. Maybe, maybe. Maybe with Miss Kim's help, I could do this, right? <laughs> Dream crushed. Dream crushed right there. Um, like, there are gifts that God has put in each one of us. There are passions that God has put in each one of our hearts. And I believe that God has deposited those gifts in our life and those passions in our life to help us fulfill the dream that He has for our life. If you have a dream, but they don't match up with your gifts and your passions, there's a chance that you're dreaming someone else's dream. So ask yourself that reality question. Fourth, the passion question. Does my dream compel me to follow it? Like, I've, I've been to hundreds of conferences over the years. And one of the great temptations of any conference is like you get so much information and so much good information, right? That, that you're like, oh my goodness, I'm going to do this, 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 and this. This is awesome. And, and, and then you wake up the next morning and you're like, uh, probably not. Like it seemed like a good idea in the moment. I was hyped up in the, in the moment of the conference, but, uh, there is no way that I'm going to do all that. In fact, that I was just sort of thriving on that person's passion as they were talking about what they were doing. But if I tried to do that, like it wouldn't work. Right. I need to find what I'm passionate about. What, what is it? What is it that puts that righteous burn inside of me? What is it that when I wake up in the morning, I can't get away from? And when I wake up tomorrow, that burn is still going to be there. That passion is still going to be there. The passions that God puts in our hearts for, for our, the dreams that He has given us, they, they don't fizzle out with time, right? They, they burn in us and they burn hot in us. Uh, fifth, the pathway question. Do I have strategy to reach my dream? Um, the real difference, John Maxwell said, between a dream and wishful thinking is what you do day to day. I love that. The real difference between a dream and wishful thinking is what you do day to day. Is there a pathway to fulfilling that dream if you stay disciplined and stay after it day by day. Remember, it, uh, uh, fulfilling your dreams, accomplishing your dreams, it doesn't happen in a day. It happens daily. All right? So are you committed day after day? Six, the people question, have I included people or, or the people that I need to realize my dream? I love the old saying that says, if you see a turtle on a fence post, you can know it didn't get there by itself. Right? And, 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 and is that just a good Southern analogy? <laughs> Yeah. No, yeah. All right. Yeah. All the people from the South have heard it, right? All right. Uh, so, but it works, right? Uh, l listen, the things that God has put in our heart, uh, the dreams that He's given us, always involve people. And chances are, it's not just about helping people, but we're going to need the right people speaking in, uh, into our lives to get us there. Sometimes, sometimes we have like God-sized dreams, and, and what do we do? We give those off to the wrong people. We begin to share those with the wrong people, and they begin to be a discouraging voice in our life. And before we know it, we're listening to their discouraging voice more than we are the power of God's voice who spoke that dream into our life. So make sure that you put the right people around you to encourage the dreams that you have in you, to encourage the passions that burn inside of you. Seventh, the cost question. Am I willing to pay the price for my dream? Right? If it was easy, you would already have it. But there's a price that's going to have to be paid. Uh, you are going to probably have to sacrifice a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to see it happen. Are you willing to pay the price? Uh, eighth, the tenacity question. Am I moving closer to my dream? Let me just give you the fulfillment question. Does working toward my dream bring satisfaction? And, and I think that it always should, even when it's hard, like it should be fulfilling. 
Like it, it, it should, it should be fulfilling to you. And tenth, the significant question, uh, the significance question: Does my dream benefit others? Rarely will God put something in our heart that is just for us, right? If He puts a dream in our heart, it means that that there's something that He wants to do that's going to be fulfilling to us, uh, but it's going to help others. All right. And so is it significant? So I hope you'll take those and just maybe use them in some way uh, in, in a devotional time. Ask yourself those questions about the dreams in your heart. All right. So number one, dream big. Secondly, uh, start small. Dream big, but start small. Zechariah 4.10, uh, Zechariah is a great, great chapter, right, where, where God gave Zechariah these eight visions for the people of Israel as they were seeking out to rebuild the temple of God, right? And, and, and this is what Zechariah 4.10 says, a very uh, um, widely used verse. Who has despised the day of small things? Who has despised the day of small things? Which means when you, when you get started, like you start, how do you, how do you rebuild the temple? Like one brick at a time. Like start small with that single brick if you want to build the, the temple. For these seven rejoice to see the plumb line of the hand of Zerubbabel. They are the eyes of the Lord which scan to and fro throughout the earth. I, I love this. Start small, but realize... God's watching and God's got you. God is there for you. It says, hey, don't despise the day of small things. Just know God's watching you and he's got you and he's for you, not against you. Uh, and, and these last two sort of go hand in hand. Start small, but by all means, do something. Do something. Start small, but do something. Take a step towards your dream. You don't need to do everything today, but you need to do something. Um, you might say, well, what if it's not God's timing? Well, He'll show you once you take the step. Take a step towards fulfilling your dream and, and He'll show you if it's His timing or what you need to be doing in that, that timing. You might question and say, what if I fail? What if I fail at this and, and I start to do something and I fail? Well, let me ask you another question. What if you succeed? Give God something to work with. Like God can work with the smallest step of faith. He can redirect you if you take that first step and maybe it's a little off center. God can redirect that, but he needs a step of faith to work with. He needs something to work with. So do something. I want to challenge you this summer. Uh, read books. <coughs> visit exotic locations. Visit exotic locations. I, I thought since we got a woohoo, we would get an Alaskan woohoo. Uh, visit exotic locations. But, but, but I also want to challenge you. Take time to dream or take time to redream. Take time to redream and let God either birth a dream in your heart or rebirth a dream that you had years ago that you want to see a passion rekindled for. Some of you have had dreams in your heart that you have given up on and God wants me to remind you that He hasn't given up on you and He hasn't given up on fulfilling those dreams through you. So I pray this summer that you will take a step in the direction that God has for your life. Let's pray. God, we love you and we thank you uh, that as Proverbs 3 reminds us, you want to order our steps. You want to lead us, God. You want to give us direction in our life. And I pray, Father, that you will do that for every person in this room today, that we would dream God-sized dreams and we would live out your plan for our life. We would not dream small, we would not put you in a box by our plans, but we would surrender our life to your God-sized plans and your God-sized dreams. Do amazing things in us and through us. And as we dream and redream this summer, Lord, birth something in our heart, Lord, that is so big and we are so passionate about that hell will not be able to stop. We love you and thank you for it in your name. Amen. Bless you guys.